Fantastic. As a reminder, three priority areas this year, educational equity, multi-tiered systems of support, which is inclusive of social emotional learning or SEL and staff collaboration, right? Really recognizing those three focus areas. So panorama data really helps us understand the perceptions of students and families, right? So that we can start better understanding SEL and equity needs. So uh, tonight, Andrew's here to talk more about the survey data we have collected. So Andrew, a big thank you for taking time out of that schedule to help us better understand what we have for us. All right, thank you for inviting me. Good evening. Thank you, board, for being here to receive some information. So the the slides that you received in the slides that I'm uh, running through tonight, it's a lot. It's more to model the process in a, in a speedy way, kind of like when you're watching a video, but you watch it faster. It's really more to model what administrators will be helping their staff dive into into their buildings. So I'm just front loading with that so there's not frustration of being able to digest and dive into the data. It's more to model the process that will be happening at the building level. And then I'll highlight some features and resources and tools along the way. But uh, good evening. And uh, I don't know how, how you guys make it this far into the day. My eyes are so blurry, so I'm going to be putting on my glasses. Um, I'm Andrew Kelly Batstone. I'm an assistant principal at Black Hills High School and part time uh, SEL coordinator for the district. So this is uh, really exciting data. I, I'm excited to look at it from a district perspective. I'm excited to walk through it with principals next week to make sure they have the tools and confidence and access to go through the process with their staff. And then I'm really excited to jump into the Black Hills uh, data and see uh, where we're at because most schools have set goals around SEL and uh, perception data is one data point to inform your progress. Uh, it's somewhat new for us to use Panorama, so we don't have the trend data that you would usually have over the course of time, but I'm excited to show you what we do have and happy to answer questions, but just know that we're not doing a deep dive. I'm doing a quick skim, and then if you would like more, um, either in a work session or just to phone a friend and go through it, I'm happy to do that. I also want to say um, I'm super excited about the legislative priority for the health and safety legislation component and SEL emphasis and was totally taking notes uh, about the community connection requirement. I know that's not officially what it's called, but I'm calling it community connection. Took notes there um, since I uh, have the luxury of also getting to be at the building level. So that's exciting. But I also see it as a tiered part of our tiered systems of support. So you've got that tier one, that universal layer where everybody gets it. So I loved the recommendation for Link Crew to really model and give examples and sell that message. And then that tier two could be the examples and access, whether it's from a homeroom or school counselors or a Google Classroom uh, to show all the different ideas for um, people who are exploring different career interest areas. And that career interest survey that's taken through Naviance might help spur some interest. And then for us to connect those opportunities in the communities with that uh, seems really exciting. And then that tier three is our school counselors do pre-registration. The goal is to meet with every student. So there should be individual conversations and idea sharing there. So I think we have a lot of opportunity to fix the awareness and to increase excitement around uh, creating those community connections. So get it started, Andra. Okay. Panorama is a program that we use to deploy the survey data. So it's perception survey. And perception survey is always interesting because it's opinion, it's how people are feeling, but that's really important in the work of social emotional um, learning and support. It is important to try to learn as much as we can about how students are feeling. And we do that in um, teacher observation and interaction. Uh, we look at data on academics, attendance and behavior, 
We have student self-referrals, friends refer friends, um, we have parent referrals, we have SEL lessons that are sequenced through um, our K-12 system. But the perception survey is an opportunity, and I would say there's pockets of increased opportunity because I would love to have more participation from our school anyway. Not all voices are in there, so we definitely have uh, more work to do, but it's the universal way to get everybody's opinion on any given time of day. So that's the cool part about a perception survey. Uh, this is just reminding us of those tiered interventions of support and that SEL is a component, it's academics, behavior, and social emotional learning that we're, we're working with. So who responded to the survey and what did we ask them? We had a family survey and then we had student surveys. The student surveys spanned grades three through 12. This is a slide that gives an example of the topics that those grade levels or the families were asked or what we were measuring. It was kind of nice, or it is nice to have Panorama because prior to Panorama, um, schools used uh, SurveyMonkey, Google surveys. Uh, it's really hard to, from a novice level, pull together viewable data. So the, there's a luxury in Tumwater having access to the Panorama program, but it does come at a cost. Andrew, I don't think we're, we have the slides up in to share. Could you give try that again and see if it's uh, if we can get those to pop up? Perfect. All right, you got them. Well, thank you. <laughs> Zoom and or webinar faux pas. Darn it! Sorry about that. Okay, this was the slide I was referencing. I was looking at a great slide. You didn't get to. I apologize for that. So the topics and the topics will come back later in this similar form in the survey data. The survey data is kind of coordinated into the topics. And then each topic can be explored with uh, a click of a button and drilling down into the specific questions that were used to build that certain topic. And so I'll show you some slides that kind of represent what I'm talking about. So here were our response rates. Certainly, like I was just saying, this is uh, with survey data, more is always better. So I don't think we'd ever be satisfied until it's 100%. And we certainly have way more than a little over 1,000 families. But this is the voices in the current data that we have. It's always important when you're working with any kind of data, whether it's perception data or not, demographics are really important. It helps you identify what voices are not in the room and whether there's disproportionality in different areas. So I, I did have some feedback from families specifically saying, why, do you, why are you asking me this stuff? Uh, and that is why. So that we can, especially when it's a, a, a lower percentage than we would like representation of our total number, it's at least good to look and say, well, did we get some representation across the board or are we missing a grade level completely? It just is information because anytime you're looking at averages, it's very important to know exactly what that average is alluding to, especially if you're in a position to make an action plan or dedicate resources or time to it. So demographic data would look like this. So this is where it's the warning of a lot of numbers are, and information is gonna flash in front of you. And I know you're not gonna have time to be able to dive in, but it's more about what the buildings are gonna be doing. So this is the district summary of the data. It'll be really interesting to see from the building level what their response rates are, what voices were represented, and then to look at their population, either using their OSPI report card or um, their Skyward reports to, to note and be aware of whose voices were represented in the survey and whose were not. We also asked parents, um, so this is a second slide of more demographic data. We wanted to know who was filling out the survey, uh, lots of moms. And then we wanted to know kind of where our 
uh, socioeconomic perspective was, because there are some questions in the survey that asked about access and opportunity, and it's important that we have a broad representation uh, from different family perspectives. This is the fun part. I can get lost in panorama for a long time. And that's why next week we're dedicating some time with principals to help them use their time efficiently. Because as we all know, there isn't uh, extra time right now, especially with um, supporting students and teachers during the school day, we can't get lost in the data. We have to use our time efficiently and know what we're looking at and know how to um, dive deeper to make sure that number means what we think it means, and then to look at uh, our school improvement plans, our current action plans to help us stay focused, and then set a goal of action towards an area that we're already working on just so we don't get scattered. So this for every survey is kind of what the data looks like. It's divided by those or organized by those topics, and then the topics are sorted by percent favorable response. So for the family survey, the highest favorable, favorable response was barriers to engagement. Now this one's kind of a double negative. Um, so you would interpret this as the barriers to engagement, 75% of, of responders said it's not, they don't, they are not experiencing barriers to engagement. But that still means there's 25% of people who might be. So, oh, before I move on, here's more. Still the family survey, still the topics. So it goes from most favorable to least favorable. It's very tempting to jump right to the, the lowest one because those numbers are, you know, they, they jump out at you. But for each of these, a principal should probably dive into each one, pull out some highlights for their building, leadership team or their staff, and then help be able to interpret those numbers or to highlight a top three. Because if they only have an hour with their staff, they're gonna need to narrow down this time. We have 15 minutes. So, right, you'd need to focus. So principals will dive into the data, work with their leadership team, and then hopefully take their top three um, areas of awareness to their staff or use some act time to dive into this data. And I'm going to show you a deeper dive, but a couple surveys from now. So we did four different surveys, a family survey, an SEL survey, but for two different grade levels, and then an equity survey, just secondary level. So you'll, you'll start to notice a pattern for each one of the surveys. And then for each one of the surveys, there's a link at the bottom, just in case you love data like I do and you wanna dive into it. Uh, if you don't have access to the slides, we'll make sure you get it and we can share it. It can be shared with the community. There's not private data in here. Um, it's all uh, anonymous. The student IDs are protected, uh, but the diving into the links lets you open up any one of these questions to dive deeper. And like I said, we'll do that later. So for example, the SEL response for grades three, five, it says K-5 up here because Panorama offers questions for K-5. We elected to um, survey grades three through five. There's the demographic breakdown. The buildings would again, look to make sure um, there, there's a representative voice for all of their demographic areas, and then they would dive into the data. And again, it looks like the family data, identified by topic, percent most favorable at the top. And then some of the questions are nationally normed. So you'll notice some, some uh, identifiers over on the right-hand side. So this is pretty cool. Overall, for the elementary group, really high in supportive relationships. That's really been a focus of all of us this year. Uh, and so it's really cool to see in the elementary should be really excited about this because I know it's one of their goals. And on top of that, it's substantiated by being really high in the nationally norm percentage. So that's really impressive. So there should always be celebrations in data as well and not just going to the areas of improvement. So going, still going through 
the second side of the topics. There's more of them. This is that second page. This is an interesting note. So we're down lower areas of favorability for challenging feelings, but according to what's happening nationally, it's actually not an alarming amount. So again, buildings will stay focused based on their school improvement plans and their goals around SEL. So they should hone in on those learning objectives that are already connected to their current goals and then use some components to inform future planning. They dive into that data by using the link that's at the bottom of the slide. 612 data, same process for those 612 campuses or those secondary campuses rather. Each building will be able to see their own demographic breakdown. This is a summary of what it looks like for this grade ban at the district level. And it's interesting in different spots, there's uh, despite the lower percentage of respondents from the secondary level, because the elementary has really kicked it out of the ballpark. Many of them even hit 80%. You can see from the secondary level, these are the student grade level responses. And we're, we're, we haven't hit the ceiling of 20% yet. So certainly an easy goal there to increase representation. And then looking at our um, student, uh, some other demographics on, do we have all voices in the room? Data is formatted similarly. This also allows buildings to coordinate and collaborate together so that if they're working on a similar goal, it's easy to share data because it looks similar. This one is uh, interesting because it's the same format we've looked at, same data display, divided or assigned by topic, organized by percent favorable. So the top favorable thing is supportive relationships at the secondary level. But nationally, it's, it's not looking so great. And so despite it being the top favorable data point, I know that most of the secondary campuses are working on this because we're trying to rebuild relationships since we've been remotely with our students for so long. We're working on that in our homerooms, in our SEL lessons, and trying to build that. So it's important to have a data point to know where we're at so that we can keep growing. More topics from the secondary level as it goes from most favorable to least favorable. So certainly you can see some other areas of that the building principals would want to dive into to learn a little bit more about what that means. And then our final fourth survey was equity. And the equity, equity and inclusion survey was only given to grades six through 12. There were some extra questions asked about um, language spoken at home. Uh, same as far as grade level and gender that was asked in the other surveys. And then in this one, it had two layers of, of race and ethnicity. One that is directly pulled from Skyward because students use their student ID number. And then the other was a self-identifier. So this definitely jumped out as a slide of interest um, from a district perspective that should also be of interest, and I presume will be at the at the building level as well as why are these numbers so off? So I'll give you a, a chance to peek at this one a little longer because this definitely was interesting to me. The students identified response over on the left and the Skyward connected data on the right for the same respondents. So there's a lot of data to dive into. So the equity specific data has three topics. And so certainly sense of belonging jumps out. We're working on relationships. Sense of belonging could definitely be stronger. So I've been telling you this whole time, it's important to dive deeper. Uh, so I wanna show you what that looks like. So this, I can imagine at Black Hills anyway, we're definitely gonna dive into that sense of belonging. So as principals go through their data and come up with some survey insights, they're gonna dive deeper. So before we get to that sense of belonging, 
for each of the surveys. Buildings should be taking some insights away from their family survey. So from a district perspective, the takeaway from the family survey, there's many, but a big easy one was that families didn't know what we're doing in the schools to support social emotional learning. They said, I'm not really sure. So we need to promote what we're doing to support social emotional learning in the schools. So that was really uh, important to find out. And that's a low cost, high yield uh, response that we can do right away. So that was good insight. I'm gonna skip to the sense of belonging uh, from the equity survey. So as you saw previously, but I, when I'm seeing numbers, forget them. So 30% of our secondary students reported feeling like they are valued members of the school community in the sense of belonging section of the equity survey, only 36%. Certainly we are not happy with that percentage. So when you click on one of those links for any specific section, it, break, it opens up specific questions. So for this topic, these were the four questions in that section that were combined to the total of 36%. So when buildings look at their responses, I would presume um, that it would stand out. Question, how connected do you feel to adults at your school? That's gonna jump out to buildings, 23%. And we've been working so hard on it. So it's also hard for buildings to look at data sometimes because it can be tough, but it's just important to make sure uh, to monitor your progress and to know we have more work to do. So, in diving into that connectedness to adults at school. It, these favorable responses do not even count those that mark in the middle. So on this one, there is a lot in the middle, but Panorama doesn't count that um, somewhat, the kind of neutral in the middle um, on any of the favorable responses so that when it says favorable, it's really, it's really up there. It's not wishy-washy in the middle. So some of the strategies that the campuses will use in responding to their data that they want to focus on or that jump out as concern, uh, there's a variety of different things in Panorama that are really easy for them just to click and utilize so they don't have to spend a ton of time with data analysis. So in that regard, it's a really user-friendly tool, but we're going to make sure they um, are aware of all the options when they meet in levels next week. So for example, if I was diving in, cause woo, I wanna really work on um, that sense of connectedness to school. So I would pull up out of all the schools, come out of the district data and pull up Black Hills High School. And then it would give me this summary. And it's gonna help schools go to their, into their um, MTSS mind and look at the three different ways that they can set an action plan towards improvement. The universal response, um, or wow, what? who are those kids in the red? And, and do we have an opportunity to identify who they might be or explore more about these individual results to see what we can do to strengthen them? So following an action plan format using, um, there's recently been introduced through our act time through student learning, uh, a data analysis protocol for them to review data and develop SMART goals. And then the I and the E include the equity components. Uh, SEL is important to follow an academic goal setting process. And that's what our teachers are gonna um, be working with their administrators to do. Uh, they have available tools. This is kind of a picture of a panorama playbook where, to explain a little bit more about what that means, when they're diving into data, whether it's this much detail, like, oh my gosh, we really want to work on self-efficacy, but I don't have time to do a lot of research in, in finding tools. The panorama, because we already um, are uh, have a contract with them, we have access to all of their tools. So you can search by any one of those areas of interest or need, whether it's uh, prevention or intervention, and it pops up some um, tools for the school or the teacher to use. There's also our Gale eLibrary and all of the SEL curriculums that we use um, K through 12. 
So bringing it back out of the building up to the district level, there are certainly some things that uh, from the district lens that we need to do to support the campuses. And the first and foremost thing would be uh, professional development and coaching and support for our leaders so that they can walk through this process with their team with spending more time diving into the data and not doing that brush, that broad stroke that you guys are receiving this evening. Uh, continuing the MTSS development is key. Um, that's our key to creating uh, equitable services and coordinating support across the district. And the district has made a commitment to that. Sharing results with families, being trans, uh, transparent with the data, uh, improving communication, uh, certainly, when rolling out something new this year with someone new doing it, uh, there's a, a improvement in uh, areas that are easily identifiable there that will be taken care of in the spring. And then as far as the buildings, when they're revisiting, reflecting, and revising their action plans, it's going to be really important, especially going through the budget process, to know some of them are nervous about, like, well, we're, we're relying on some of these resources for our tiers of intervention and support. And uh, certainly some of the buildings are a little nervous about what that means moving forward in uh, supporting their work. So that could be anything from the panorama tool itself. Uh, there's our um, substitute Senate Bill 5030 that uh, is really exciting, I think, because it kind of presses um, on our districts and school counseling teams to do the work that they've been wanting to do um, and just get kind of sideswiped in the daily crisis response of different things, but developing a comprehensive school counseling program, because that would be a tier one universal support for our social emotional learning opportunities across our district. Uh, will we have some of our um, partners, our community partners, and will there what will the support be for that continued uh, curriculum and training and access to evidence-based prevention and intervention tools? Because those are necessary in sustaining our tiered system of support. And you made it to the end and it's 8-11. And one of the things I didn't remember to say because I was so excited about the conversation prior was uh, shifting to a Zoom meeting. We were, student learning was so excited to give you your hydration stations tonight because you, you spend so long in these meetings. We had hydration stations for you. So now we'll just need to figure out uh, a delivery time. I don't know what the food delivery service is, but we could figure out, we can drop it on your doorstep, leave it at the district office for you to pick up. I'm not telling you what's inside it. It's a very cute water bottle, I'll tell you that much. Um, but we want to take care of our school board members. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for still staring at a computer tonight and listening and at a lightning speed, the cool data that uh, your buildings, starting with administrators, are going to start doing next week. And then hopefully through act time or staff meetings or leadership team meetings, your building principals are going to jump into that data uh, and continue uh, revising their action plans to really know for sure that they're meeting the needs of our students. So thank you. Great, thank you, Andra. Thank you, Mr. Batstone. Any uh, questions from board members or comments on the Panorama survey? Let's see, uh, Director Kaikinen, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'll try and make it um, super fast, just kind of a, a comment. So thank you very much for all of this great information. I did have a chance to skim through um, ahead of time. So one thing um, uh, significantly caught my eye. And so I was hoping you could remind me um, now who, who all took this survey, students and families as well? Yes, I think I'd, this may have been one of the screens that I didn't get to to share, yes. So families were were sent the survey, grades <clears throat> three through five for social emotional learning, and then six through twelve had had social emotional learning and equity. Okay. Um, so the thing that caught my eye was the income breakdown. So uh, it looked like 
with the responses, there was about 55% of the family responses that were $100,000 or greater. Um, a quick assessment of Tumwater median family adjusted income is about 69,000. Um, so that's an interesting perspective with everything you were saying about the demographics and using that lens of who took that survey and what that might look like for that particular information. Um, that's a pretty big disparity when it comes to income and representation of families. So uh, we'll be interested to hear later on as you're breaking all this information down, what you learn on those deep dives. Yeah, it will be interesting what how it breaks down per building. Like, it does that spread stay similar across the district or does it, um, is it very different for our different campuses? Because I think that will also lend itself to what can we do differently to uh, get a more representative voice at the table when we're, we're seeking feedback and asking for input. Because I think this was sent out to families uh, in email and on social media. So I think there's, uh, I think we're, we got to get creative. Uh, buildings themselves also sent it out because I think sometimes families might be a little more inclined to, to respond to something from their buildings. And so I do think that helped a couple campuses increase their representative voices, but yes, all of those things. I love diving into demographics. Great, thank you. Thank you, Director Kaikinen. Um, Director Beard, go ahead. I just want to thank you for doing this work more data means more work, but uh, what I've been concerned about is that the only data we have are test score data. And I know that this could be hard, that this could be hard to see. And sometimes we get scared to look at the data, but we don't know how well we're doing or what we can improve on to get better if we don't have it. So I, I know it's very vulnerable. I'm, I'm sure our staff are feeling very vulnerable right now. And I just want to, I want to acknowledge this is this is just the first step for us to serve our students better and to know what's working and what's not working and that there's not there's not judgment that that this is all part of the process and I love that we're using panorama and I love all the tools that we have with it and yes it does cost me I don't know how we do our work without knowing what's working and what's not working and so thank you for dedicating your time to this and and for our staff dedicating their time to looking at what this data means. Yeah, I appreciate the comment about the vulnerability because if you're not used to looking at perception data coming from how people are feeling, it is hard to ask and receive wholeheartedly how someone is feeling and trying not to take it personally. So that is something that uh, we'll be we'll pay attention to when we talk to principals next week as far as uh, supporting their staff and really setting the stage to being ready to receive the information because they're working so hard and putting their hearts out there that I definitely wouldn't want this to be something that felt like their heart got stepped on. And sometimes when you're asking, especially uh, young adolescents, um, sometimes that's hard hearing what they're feeling in that moment when you felt like it could be something different, but it's important to get a baseline. And then we just use that baseline as checkpoints, hopefully we get to either continue using Panorama or something similar where we get some trend data so that it's not one alarming data point that uh, really has an emotional impact. So that, that definitely is some work we need to do to support our staff in proceeding with this work. I appreciate that, thank you. Great, thank you, Director Beard. Any other last comments? All right. Thank you again, Mr. Bestone. We will now move on to board committee reports. Um, if you hadn't noticed, Director Sale has dropped off. Apparently there is a power outage out there in the Delphi area. So good luck to everyone in there. Hopefully she'll be back with us um, later. If not, we will certainly figure that out. So we probably won't hear from Lori on the Equity Advisory Committee update. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I will not be doing a WIA update. So that leaves us with Director Kaikinen and our legislative update, which probably would take up our time anyway for other two. So go ahead, Director Kaikinen, when you're ready. 
Yeah, 